द फंक्शन ऑफ द सेल इन ह्यूमन बॉडी नीड्स टू बी कंटिन्यूसली रेगुलेटेड हाउ आर द नर्व फाइबर्स ऑफ द न्यूरल सिस्टम डू नॉट इनरवेट ऑल सेल्स ऑफ द बॉडी देयर फॉर द फंक्शन ऑफ द रेगुलेटिंग बॉडी सेल्स आर परफॉर्म बाय हार्मोन्स सेक्रेटेड बाय द इंडोक्राइन ग्लैंड द न्यूरल सिस्टम एंड द इंडोक्राइन सिस्टम ज्वाइंटली कोऑर्डिनेट एंड रेगुलेट द फिजियोलॉजिकल फंक्शन ऑफ द बॉडी न्यूरल एंड इंडोक्राइन सिस्टम कलेक्टिवली नोन एज न्यूरो इंडोक्राइन सिस्टम and the study of this system is called neuroendocrinology so this combination uh, neuroendocrine systems next the endocrinology will discuss that endocrinology is the branch of medicine which deals with the endocrine glands and the action of their hormones thomas edison an english physician and scientist is known as the father of endocrinology the human endocrine system consists of different endocrine glands located in different parts of our body hypothalamus is situated at the basal part of the diencephalon in the forebrain and just below the hypothalamus uh, a small pinkish pcipate gland is called pituitary gland it is known as the master gland of endocrine systems and another gland is located on the dorsal side of the forebrain is called pineal gland it is a small reddish gland and shaped like pine corn in this diagram you can see and next is the thyroid gland neck has the largest endocrine gland of the body called thyroid glands it is composed of two lobes which are located on the either side of the upper part of the trachea in humans four parathyroid glands are present on the back side of the thyroid glands there are four para para thyroid glands four in numbers and next is the thymus glands is a lobular structures located between lungs behind the sternum on the ventral side of the aorta just above the heart and in the loop of duodenum there is pancreas it is a composite gland or heterocrine glands which acts as both exocrine and endocrine glands and adrenal gland is situated uh, a at the anterior part of the kidney one pair of adrenal glands there gonads consist of a pair of testes in male and a pair of ovaries in uh, female these gl glands are in heterocrine glands because they perform both the uh, as primary sex organ as well as endocrine glands so hormones are directly secreted in the blood and goes to the distant part of the body endocrine glands lack ducts and are hence called ductless glands on uh, their secretions are called hormones hormones are directly related released into the blood and transported to the distant located target organ hormones are non nutrient chemicals which act as intercellular messengers and produced in trace amounts by the glands and neurons they are soluble in water and bloods hormones produce their effect on the target cells or tissue by binding to a specific protein called hormone receptors located in the target cells or tissue only hormone receptors present on the cell membrane of the target cells are called membrane bound receptors and the receptor present inside the target cells are called intracellular receptors so there are two types mostly nuclear receptors are present in the nucleus of the cell if there is absent the effect of uh, insulin on different target cells you can see in this this examples 
each receptor is a specific to one hormone only and hence receptors are a specific now liver kidney also uh, produce hormones hormone secretions are modified by the different stimulus and exocrine glands like salivary salivary glands sebaceous glands and sweat glands this produce these are called duct gland because they have ducts these glands have ducts hence these are called duct glands or exocrine glands pancreas and gonads have both the endocrine and exocrine properties these glands are known as heterocrine glands pancreas and gonads they have both the exocrine and in ex heterocrine glands exocrine secretes hormones through a ducts and endocrine part secretes hormone directly to the blood hormone are also secreted by the gastrointestinal inter, intestinal tract kidney liver and heart also and they are uh, produce hormone the endocrine glands along with exocrine exocrine glands are heterocrine glands so endocrine exocrine and heterocrines three types of uh, glands they produce hormones different hormones now we will discuss the endocrine glands in the brain there are three types first is the hypothalamus so hypothalamus is situated at the basal part of the diencephalon in the forebrain it contains several groups of neurosecretory cells called nuclei which produce hormone that is called hypothalamic or neurohormones these hormones regulates the synthesis and secretion of pituitary hormones hormones produced by hypothalamus are two types this neuro hypo neuro hormones two types releasing hormones which are stimulate secretion of pitu anterior pituitary hormones for example hypothalamic hormones called gonadotropins releasing hormones are stimulate the pituitary synthesis and uh, release of gonadotropins fsh and lh follicle stimulating hormones and luteinizing hormones this is the releasing hormones examples and inhibiting hormones uh, which inhibit secretion of uh, pituitary hormones example is uh, this uh, somatostatin exa example of inhibitory hormones release of <coughs> somatostatin from the hypothalamus inhibits the release of growth hormone from the pituitary now these hormones are originated from the hypothalamic neurons pass through the exon and released from their nerves in dips and this reach the pituitary glands through a portal circuitry systems next is the pituitary uh, glands it is located in the bony cavity called cella tarsica and it is attached to the hypothalamus by the stalk this is the pituitary glands and uh, situated just below the hypothalamus pituitary gland is a smallest endocrine glands it is called master gland of endocrine system because it contains uh, controls thyroid gl glands adrenal cortex and this is divided into two parts adenohypophysis or ad anterior pituitary and the second is the uh, uh, this posterior pituitary or so uh, neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary anterior pituitary consists of parts uh, this uh, anterior lobe is called pars distalis and second is inter pars intermediate so this is the uh, pars intermedia and they are actually merged to each other in the human beings pars distalis and pars uh, intermedia and pars distalis is called the anterior pituitary
this uh, parts distal is produced different types of hormones like growth hormone gh prolactin trl thyroid stimulating hormone tsh and adrenocorticotrophic hormones acth luteinizing hormone lh and follicular stimulating hormone fsh and parts intermedia secretes only one hormone called melanocytes a stimulating hormone msh uh, however in humans the parts intermedia is almost merged with the parts distalis and this is the all uh, these hormones are secreted from this anterior pituitary or parts distalis now we will discuss the function of these hormones so due to uh, loss or hyposecretion of the growth hormone results in a stunted growth and resulting in pituitary dwarfism and over secretion of growth hormone has stimulates abnormal growth of the body leading to gigantism and excess secretion of growth hormone in adult especially in middle age can result in severe disfigurement especially of the face called acromegaly which may lead to serious complications and premature death if unchecked the disease is hard to diagnose in early stage and often goes undetected for many years so uh, and until causes and next we will go prolactin prolactin is regulates the growth of the mammary gland and formation of milk in them so it is called maternity hormone also and tsh stimulates the synthesis and secretion of thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland and acth stimulates the synthesis and secretion of steroid hormones called glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex and the sex corticoids and next is the lh and fsh stimulates gonadal activity and hence called gonadotrophins in females lh induces the ovulation of fully mature molecules or graphene follicles and maintains the corpus luteum formed from the remnant of graphene follicles and in males lh stimulates the synthesis and secretion of hormones called androgens by the leading cells of the testis testis and these two hormones and fsh stimulate growth and development of ovarian follicles in females and this uh, is called follicle stimulating hormone it is also helps in asma spermatogenesis and next hormone is the uh, this lh and fsh both are called gonadotropins and this is the melanocyte stimulating hormone or msh msh acts on the melanocytes or melanin containing cells and regulates pigmentation of the skin this is the melanocytes from the parts intermedia secreted from the parts intermedia and neurohypophysis produce two types of hormone first is oxytocin and second is the vasopressin they are actually formed in the uh, hypothalamus and goes to the pituitary through the axon this oxytocin acts on the smooth muscles of our body and stimulates their contraction in females it stimulates a vigorous Uh, contracts of the uterus at the time of the childbirth and milk ejection from the mammary glands this is so called birth hormone also because it helps in during the birth uh, of the uh, child or baby and this is the uh, help in contraction of the uterus muscles and next is the vasopressin acts mainly at the kidney and stimulates resorption of water and electrolytes by the distal tubules and thereby reduce loss of water through the urine called diuresis 
hence it is called antidiuretic hormones an impairment affecting synthesis or release of ads result in diminished ability of the kidney to conserve water leading to water loss and dehydration this condition is known as diabetes insipidus now we discuss the third is the pineal gland pineal gland is located on the dorsal side of the forebrain pineal secretes a hormone called melano melana melatonin melatonin plays a very important role in regulation of 24 hour rhythm of our body for example it helps in maintaining the normal rhythm of sleep wake cycle body temperatures pigmentation in addition it uh, pigmentation metabolism menstrual cycles and our defense capillary so these three hormones of the brain are pineal gland hypothalamus and pituitary okay thank you next we will discuss the uh, thyroid and parathyroid in next class